Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. We're now starting module six where we'll talk about personal genomics and you should be well prepared for this now that you know so much about human genetic variation. And in this lecture and the next we're going to talk about DNA fingerprinting. We'll talk about why DNA makes such powerful evidence about the special alleles of the VNTR loci that are used for DNA fingerprinting analysis. And we'll talk about how new combinations of these alleles arise in every person, making each one of us distinct. So DNA makes good evidence in part because we all leave our DNA behind us. Everywhere we go, we shed skin cells, thousands of them, um, every minute. And each of those cells contains a complete copy of our genome. This DNA is very stable. Um, stability is one of the reasons that natural selection chose DNA as the medium in which to store genetic information. DNA is, for example, much more stable than RNA. In a clean environment, it'll last millions of years. Now, the Another reason DNA makes such good evidence is because of a technique called the polymerase chain reaction that can amplify DNA reliably from small samples. It can amplify DNA from complex or dirty mixtures, like a blood spot on a piece of clothes, um, and it can also amplify DNA that's in, that's in, that's in visual as the DNA that's in a single cell can be amplified to give quantities of DNA that are sufficient for the reactions that will actually identify the sequences of the DNA. Finally, DNA makes good evidence because our DNA differs at several million places. We talked about this in Module 1, how there are, in each set of our genome, we differ from other people at several million places. And it's not that you know, Europeans differ from Africans and from Asians, each individual differs from each other individual at several million places. This means that each person is genetically unique, and because these differences are spread throughout the genome, they're relatively easy to find and characterize. For DNA fingerprinting work, a particular set of loci in the genome that are exceptionally variable have been chosen for analysis. And this standard set is used by agencies around the world. And the markers that are used are called VNTR markers. And in the le next lecture, we'll talk about what these markers actually are, how they work. Um, for now, the import you can see here that each VNTR marker is on a different chromosome, except for two of them that are on one that are on the same chromosome. But the most important feature of VNTR markers is how polymorphic they are. Each VNTR marker has many different alleles. Um, each color here represents a locus of VNTR. A VNTR marker is a locus, a place on the chromosome. Each color shown here represents a different allele of that locus. Now, what makes these so powerful is that they're reassorted with every replication. So if you consider a father and a mother, each of us has two complete sets of genes. So we have two alleles of each VNTR marker, as indicated here. When we make gametes, we shuffle the two sets of alleles that we have into a new set that we put into the gamete and pass on to our child. And each time the shuffling is done, it comes out in a different arrangement. So not only does each child have a unique set, but e even two children of the same parents will have completely different combinations of the VNTR alleles that were present in their parents. So. DNA makes good evidence because we can't help leaving DNA behind us. It's stable, it's easy to test, and it's unique for every person. 
The VNTR loci are particularly useful because they're so highly polymorphic. There's so many different alleles of each locus that every person has a unique combination, well, except for identical twins, of course. Every person has a unique combination of VNTR alleles. Coming up next, we'll discuss the actual physical properties of VNTR alleles that makes them such good genetic markers. I hope to see you there.